Today, I will show you the easiest and best way to configure OpenHAB. What's up guys, I'm Sim and you're watching Smartest House, a channel where I show how I design and build my smart home. In the last episode, we installed OpenHAB on a Pine64 single board computer. Now it's time to set ourselves up to configure it. There are two main ways to work with OpenHAB, Paper UI and working with configuration files. Paper UI is a web-based interface that allows you to do a lot of the things OpenHAB provides in your web browser. You can install bindings, set up things, link items and channels, etc. To use Paper UI, you need to open your web browser, type in your machine's IP address, colon 8080, and from the tabs, select Paper UI. Unfortunately, if you want to create more complex rules and automation systems, Paper UI can be a bit limiting, and that is why I'm working with configuration files directly. These files are text files, so technically you could use any text editor, but using a notepad or a wordpad for the job can be a bit clunky and definitely not a very pleasurable experience. A good thing to know though is how to use nano text editor when you're logged in via SSH. It's definitely not something you want to use to build this system, but it might come handy in some point in time. To get the best experience and smooth workflow, you'll need to get Visual Studio Code from Microsoft with the OpenHAB extension installed. For that, Google Visual Studio Code and find the download link. I also added the download link in the description. Once finished downloading, install and open it. Click here and type OpenHAB. This will search for the extension we need. Click on OpenHAB and on the window that open, click install. As you can see, I already have it installed. Once installed, click on File, Open Folder. Now go to Network, choose Pine64SO, and you should see a folder called OpenHAB. You might remember this from the last time when we checked if Samba was working. Highlight the folder and click Select Folder. Now you have all the OpenHAB configuration files opened in your Visual Studio Code, as you can see here. If you go through the folders, you see that each of them only has one file in it, the README. Each file points you to a web page that holds the relevant documentation about that particular folder. I highly recommend you spend a bit of time to read through the documentation they've provided. They might seem a little overwhelming at first, but they do a great job explaining how OpenHAB is built. And even if you don't understand everything, at least you know where to go if you need more information. Now let's create a new configuration file and try to edit it. If we make a new rules file here, I'll type in rule, you'll see that I get prompted with choices and hit tab and the bare bones of the rule structure is filled in for me. This is a great time saver and helps you prevent simple mistakes. There's a ton more features OpenHAB's extension provides and we'll explore them as we go along. And that is it for this time guys, you are now ready to configure OpenHAB. Here's a question for you. Would you rather use Paper UI or work with configuration files directly? Let me know below in the comments. You can find all these steps in my blog at smartesthouse.net, so if you haven't yet, go and check it out as well. I've also added the link for the post in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you liked the video, subscribe and click on the bell icon so you'll be notified if a new video comes out. In the next video, I'll talk about the basic concept of OpenHAM and what all these folders you saw contain. Until then, take care, and I'll see you next time.